That's the L0320. So I'm back for something really interesting that I've been wanting to actually review for a while, uh, but I wanted to do it right. So the thing about it is that it's got a Chronicle series that's on um, machinima.com. And in addition to that, like it's kind of like three short Chronicle episodes about three of the main characters that are for the brand new Justice League gods and monsters. So the first in the lineup is actually Wonder Woman. The second is, I think, Superman and Brainiac. And then the third is Batman versus Harley Quinn. So the first one is segueing off of like our authentic version of this alternate universe, which I don't even understand. Uh, there are some creatures called the Koba. Um, they've kind of like laid captive uh, Steve Trevor. Steve Trevor, like most of the time, he's associated with Wonder Woman. But then when Wonder Woman actually comes out and she's kind of like wearing all white, she's got red hair, I was like, wait. She's like a mix of Hawk Girl, Xena, and Thor. Because, like, I kid you not, like, she has raw power and she's got a sword that no matter what, it tailors to her. Like, she can beckon it and make it come back to her. Um, she uses that to deflect things. And basically, when they go through the, the chronicle of this episode, it's called Big. Uh, there's, a, I guess, some kind of creature called um, Gigantic or something like that. And, um,. Basically, you find out in between the fight that um, Steve Trevor and her like are friends, but with benefits. They're not in a relationship. Like they're just uh, shacking up essentially. And uh, they were talking about their promiscuous act activities uh, the night before while they're in mid combat. The combat is actually really legit. And I miss Bruce Timm's art form. Like I love his art form. Like I really want them to bring back Bat Batman Beyond. Like if they brought that back. In an older version, because I think that the end of epilogue, they showed an older Terry McGinnis. I love that episode. I was like, bring it back. You know what I'm saying? That would be amazing. But anyway, with this episode, it did depict an interestingly strong, but at the same exact time, um, vulnerable Wonder Woman. Because she it got really emotional towards the end after the altercation that happened. But at the same exact time, like the proof of point she basically almost let Steve Trevor get killed. And so it was it was a really interesting small look. It was like maybe like a six minute clip. And so what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be going through each one of these. I'm gonna go next to uh, Superman versus Brainiac. And then I'm gonna finally top it off with, I actually got an early version sneak peek of um, the gods and monsters. So I'm gonna do a full review on that. But I wanted to make sure I did this first. So that concludes my review for Wonder Woman. So far I give it like maybe an eight out of 10. Uh, it could have been a little bit better. I think they could have added a lot more into it, but maybe they should have been for the movie. So we'll see. This is SCL0320. And again, I make up JVS. Coming back at you in just a second with Superman vs. Brainiac. Later. Going on YouTube, this is part two of the Justice League uh, Gods, and, Gods and Monsters Chronicles that's uh, premiering on the Machinima. Again, I'm gonna be doing all three of the actual shorts and kind of getting my perspective on them before going into the actual movie because I thought it'd be really cool to actually do that. So the next one that I just looked at was Superman vs. Brainiac. It was surprisingly really good. Um, I was thinking like, this is gonna be a slugfest, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I seen looks of what Superman's supposed to look like. He kind of looks like Zod to me. Uh, to be quite fair, um, but I don't know anything about his backstory. All I know is it started off with them in complete terror. And it's weird because um, I can't remember the name of the newscast, but it was really weird. I knew that wasn't Lois Lane. I knew that wasn't uh, Lana Lang either. I don't know who that was. It was actually a reporter. But either way, it went and segue to the president. The president looked a lot like Amanda Waller, even like the voice. It sounded like the old voice actor for Amanda Waller. And then the person that was kind of like her candy sir was um what was the name of the person i forget what she called i think savannah or something like that and he had laid out a contingency that what they need to do to take out this mass is to nuke it and um she's like that's millions of people down there she's like is there any other way and she kept on trying to look to her friend well not her friend but the uh service agent that was trying to contact superman they said they couldn't contact him they were like he might be off world he might be as fortunate as a solitude they don't know um, and so then like you finally see like the nuke about to come out and um, and then he just kind of writes up there give me five minutes please and uh, I thought that was such a subtle touch because the guy I was like is that how Jordan of this universe you know what I'm saying I didn't know because he was like like 
oh my god like i can't believe i'm about to do this i'm about to let this payload go and um it's it's really good y'all because when superman finally does get there like there are people like panicking and like just riots in the streets stuff like that and it's all destruction and it's like a huge red mass it's kind of like an orb that freaking freeze that left on the ground and it's it's nuts because he can barely even get to him and then when he finally does get inside it bears a witness of something that the government actually created and that government actually created brainiac and what was even crazier is the fact that it's basically a little kid and he's trying to tell him you got to you have to you know learn to control yourself and like just like i was a little kid you had to learn to control yourself he's like i can't and um he looked at him and i was like he's not about to kill this kid you know but then I was like, this is not the Superman that I know. You know, I don't know what this guy's about to do. But then at the end, how it ended, I was like, dang. So it was a pretty good episode. I have to give that one a 10 out of 10 because I love the, it wasn't a lot of action, but what it had had substance. And if this is anything to indicate what kind of Superman this is, he does not have any morals. He will kill. And in addition to that, he does have, uh, a confliction about him as to what's right and what's wrong and so I think that that was a really good introduction to the character more so than the Wonder Woman episode and the name of the episode was Bomb because it was about to be a bomb that was about to go off if he hadn't gotten there so anyway I give that one a 10 out of 10 I actually really enjoyed it that was uh, Superman vs. Brainiac and uh, I got one more to come which is Batman vs. Holly Quinn SEL0320 making up of JVS We'll be right back for one more, and then the ultimate review. Peace. Holy crap. What was that? Uh, the episode name was um, Twisted. Again, I'm back again for a, uh, a third uh, review for the small Justice League uh, Gods and Monsters Chronicles there are on machinima.com which everybody can watch them. I'll leave in the description bar below for all three videos. Uh, if I don't make it all three videos then I'm definitely going to put it on the main one that I'm going to incorporate with the main review that I'm going to do for Gods and Monsters. This episode was nuts y'all. I'm going to be quite honest with you. Um, the tone of this show slash I don't know if this is going to be an actual series to come. If it is, I hope so. But it's going to have to be on Cartoon Network or Adult Swim. This is some seriously violent and jacked up stuff. Like I saw dead bodies. They're all scrunched up together in like a refrigerator with something said grape soda. Um, I saw somebody that literally had their body completely like severed off and put on a spring like a jack. Um, I saw like somebody get chainsawed. Then of course the body was already dead and it already been mutilated and it was already rotting, but it was chainsawed. And um, this is all from Harley Quinn. The thing about this Harley Quinn, she's sick. Like she's she's not like a psychologist or she's not just like an expert like with hand-to-hand um, -hand combat. It just has a morality complex because of her addiction to Joker. I don't even know if the Joker even exists in this universe because the fact is she looks like she's been put together herself. She's kind of like a mixture of the doll maker, Harley Quinn. And if any of y'all seen Drawn Together, um, I swear it sounds like the voice of Doll from John Together. Um, she's sick. Um, the Batman in this one, he's really edgy. Like, he he looks like he cares, you know? And I think he's been shocked by everything that he saw, you know? But by the end of it, when he started really kind of going hand-to-hand -hand combat with her, she really couldn't take him, you know? And he was really smart about some things. Like, he fled and let the girl go. But then he was kind of, like, drawn out to figure out what else was going on. And now that I realize, now looking at it, that was all justifiable reason for him to take her out and kill her. I didn't realize it. Like, I was like, why don't you just stop her? You know, if, you, you, if you're this good, like, why don't you just go ahead and stop her? He wanted to see everything that she had done, she's capable of, so he can justify killing her. Because he's a freaking vampire. What? <laughs> um, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming at all. Um... I, well, I take that back. I did kind of see it coming because I did hear notions that, um, that some of them were monsters and I think that Batman was something otherworldly. Um, and I was like, okay, if he looks like a bat, he's probably basically kind of like a vampire or a bat or something like that. So I thought this one was actually really good as well. I give it a 9 out of 10 um, only because I wanted to see more. 
I wanted to see like where he kind of started from and what is it was there a connection to the Joker all I know is she got taken out like it was a bloody mess like blood was dripping everywhere it was squirting out and joint I was like dang this joint is violent cursing going on so we'll see uh, I'm interested I'm more interested to look at the brand new uh, movie now than I was before for sure so this is SEL 0320 for your third review for um, the Chronicle series for Justice League Gods and Monsters now I'm gonna go ahead and watch this movie and give y'all a full in-depth review of it take care thanks everybody for watching later Hey, what's going on at YouTube? So I'm back after a full roundup of all the different Chronicle episodes, which was, I think, let's see if I get it right. So Big Bomb and what was the last one? I forget the last one. That? Bite? I can't remember. But either way, all three of those were actually pretty decent. I think I gave them from ratings of 7 to 10 to 9. The last one, which was the Batman with Harley Quinn. Either way, this is something that I hadn't estimated. Um, because going into this, I knew that Rem, Bruce Timm's association with it, I knew the, the stylization of it, it was reminiscent of the old um, Superman, Batman, Batman Beyond um, type for like how they're actually drawn and designed as far as the animation is concerned. But that was all I really knew. I knew that they were villains essentially i was like these are people that are not afraid to kill based on when i looked at the first look and i was like this is just so off like why would they not continue on the 52 comics you know i was like why, why, why don't you just go back to what you know so looking at those small little clippings i was like wow this is an interesting story but then when they finally actually did get to the first opening stage of them they've got the same person um steve trevor and he's kind of working with this group and stuff like that and they were like talking to the Justice League which makes up of Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman but their backstories are so crazy y'all um because basically when when it first comes up there they're trying to infiltrate this group of terrorists essentially but they murder them and I mean not just like murder I think like Lois Lane on the news and this is a whole different look for Lois by the way when they finally get out there like and they start attacking them like they brutally murder them like they dismember them like body parts all over the place it is just it was a bloodbath it was nuts and when they finally got to the news report like lois was like yeah this they didn't just murder 50 people like they massacred them and it's true like and they, they didn't think two licks about it but it's funny because with this review, I'm going to have to kind of not do what I normally would do. I would go and talk about the animation. I would go and talk about the voice actors. I would go and talk about the story. I can't do that with this one because the story, to me, it really did surprise me. I actually really did like it. From everything with how they started off to how they finished and the necessity behind them. I, I was thinking like either one or three things are gonna happen in the beginning of this episode because looking at them slaughter all those people was one thing but then when I actually started seeing like their backstories like when they're talking about um, Kurt Landon who's actually the Batman of this universe I think he was voice acted by was it Michael B. Hall? I think Michael B. Hall was let me see not, I'm sorry Michael C. Hall yeah he does play Kurt Langstrom and Batman uh, you got Isaac, Jason Isaacs, he's playing Lex Luthor. You got Benjamin Bratt, he's playing Superman Zod, which is a funny backstory about that. And then you got Tamara Taylor, who plays first, I guess the first African American Wonder Woman, uh, and, and her name is actually Becca. But each one of their story arcs are so dark, especially Superman's. Like, when I was looking at them, I was like, okay, little Kal-El is about to get sent off, you know. No, this is not the conventional way he's sent off. Like, if you look at him, and I said before, I was like, he looks like General Zod. There's a reason for that. And it's not necessarily, how do I say, consensual? I guess is the best way of saying it without saying it too bad. Because um, Laura, Laura L. is definitely still this, this man's father. I mean, I mean this man's... Um, 
thing. <laughs> Mother, but Zod is the father. And with the Batman of this, I don't know what happened to Bruce Wayne or his backstory in this universe, but all I know is Kurt Langstrom basically um, was very sick. And with how he was sick, like he was required to need some kind of injection to be able to do this. But the funny thing is there are so many Easter eggs, y'all. If you pay attention, I'll, I'll try to name off some names with this. Like I said, this is totally different. I saw, uh, shoot, Hamilton. I saw Victor Stone, Victor Stone's dad. I saw um, Ray Palmer. I saw how many others? It was so many others. Victor's Freeze. Um, shoot, there was a lot of them. There was even mentions of Poison Ivy. There's so much that they merged into this universe and they did it in such a unique way. But I think that the tone of this was the darkest of any of the animated features I've ever seen. Because basically, they are no holds barred. They, they're baiting like, whether or not to overthrow the United States, essentially. And I was right about when I was talking about Amanda Waller's voice, like, Waller is the president. And Lex, he's a lot different. He's not necessarily a pacifist. He's just more mature. Like when basically when Superman came down, he was already a, a adult, you know, and like Superman was a baby. And so it's different because he watches how Superman came to be. And at the same exact time, he's got a lot of knowledge about Superman before Superman even had it. And like this Superman, he was raised by uh, um, a Latino family. Uh, he was from, brought up from harsh beginnings. I was interested to see kind of how he reestablished himself with his powers and stuff like that. That was one thing I was like, I was like missing from this. But like the way that he is, especially when he got this conversation with Lois, I was like, yeah, this dude will kill you. And at the same exact time, there's a part of him that he sees terrible things happen and he, he emotes to it, you know. It's like no matter how rough he looks and feels, like he will centralize himself, but at the same time, time, he will not shake when it comes to getting what he wants or what he feels is the right thing to do. And like when they get to the final act and the fighting, y'all, the fighting is legit. Like I, I kid you not, I, the fight between Superman and this one thing, like it's comparable to Superman versus Doomsday. It's that epic and it's that harsh. Uh, even like Kurt Langstrom's backstory with um, Magnus and what was her name? Tiffany or Tina, I'm sorry. I thought that was an interesting dynamic because like Kurt is totally different. Like he, he's not necessarily um, just a normal person. Like he's gifted mentally and gifted physically, but it's a curse because he has to sustain himself through this disease that he has and like he's basically slowly losing his humanity through it and throughout most of the movie like you're just kind of watching it and it's like man these things all these guys are disintegrating and then the one thing that surprised me is that because when I looked at the, the, the smaller the clip with um, Wonder Woman I was like man what is this you know um, but looking at her backstory and how she it revolves around Apocalypse and Dark Sea and Old Father Oh my gosh, that, it is nuts. Like, it is so far out there that I know that the creative design had to have been like Sam Lee, um, I'm sorry, Sam Louie and uh, Bruce Tim and some of the other great ones that made up some of the great story arts from before. This was really well done, y'all. Um, the voice acting was actually on point as well. I mean, I think that Michael C. Hall's presence there is definitely, you can hear it, you know? Um, even with Batman, like, how his character was really strong, but it didn't mean a hill of beans with what the government had at their disposal, what the enemy was, and at the same exact time, like, compared to the other two, like, he, even though he's a vampire, he has limitations in comparison to them. And yet, he still shines like how Batman shines. Like, no matter what's going down, no matter how strong the other enemy is, he will not stop. And that's kind of how he is, and I love that. And even, like, the relationship between him and Superman, it's an unspoken kind of relationship. And these are bad guys, you know? Like, 
I mean, they're not good people necessarily. Like, they will kill. And uh, it's just funny how their characters kind of going back and forth. Another thing was funny was, like, Steve Trevor kept on telling one woman, like, your boyfriend Superman. She's like, he's not my boyfriend. But yet, to me, I felt like there was this awkward kind of tension between them. And I don't know. One of the things I think that I don't like about this is I want to see more. I want them to develop this into an actual series. I want them to... Well, I don't think they can, though. I, don't, I really don't think they can. It's too adult. It's too mature-themed. I don't think they really can. But I want to see more. Take it and don't merge it in with the rest of the the DC Universe. Keep this to the side. This is a small little gem that they can do so much with. Because there are so many different other heroes and villains that didn't even get brought up. You know what I'm saying? And so what they could do with this is a whole lot. So I hope they keep this dimension. Like, I guess for me, when I was looking at it in the beginning, like before with the trailers, I was like, man, this is going to suck. But it didn't. It was actually really good. I highly recommend it. It's actually available now um, for the digital copy if you want to own it. I think rent it as well. Um, it's going to be releasing now, I think, next week. So I'm going to definitely buy it. Uh, and add it to the Justice League collection. I'm surprised at this. And uh, I give it, I guess, all around an 8.5 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. Um, even like, like I said, when it comes to the fighting, when it comes to the gore, when it comes to the raw violence, this is seriously violent. And you'll see what I mean once you watch it. It's, 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 and nothing gets held back at all. Like, at all. And I, I love that. I love that DC was willing to go there. So I commend you, DC, for that and Warner Brothers Animations. Thank you for watching this review for the Batman. I'm sorry, dang. Justice League, Gods and Monsters. Please leave your like below if you enjoy this uh, review for me. Um, definitely leave your comments below. I don't know why, but I feel like today I was really spotty. Like, as far as like my words and my dialect, I think that I'm worn out and I'm pretty tired. So I'm going to go and get me some rest. Congratulations again to XX Fearless Spider. He was the winner of the brand new free game that he was able to get. What he wanted was actually um, the Xbox Live like cards. And so I've already got him. I think I already got it right here. Let me get it real quick. No, we don't have it. Ah, oh, crap, I left it in the car. But um, I definitely want to let you know I really appreciate you, man, for being a part. Thanks, everybody, for being a part of the channel and subscribing. Love you all. This is JVS. We're out. Look for us to have a lot bit more comment, comment to come. Dang. See, I'm jacked up. I'm sorry, y'all. I know this is terrible, but I'm gone. Hopefully you enjoyed the review either way. Later.